Hi guys, it's Chelsea and today I'm going to be talking about the RTR and whether or not I think it's worth it to go. So for those of you that don't know, the RTR aka the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous is an event that happens every single year, usually in January, in Quartzsite, Arizona. This happens on BLM land or Bureau of Land Management land and so it's free to camp there and it's basically a gathering of all nomads vehicle dwellers campers whatever van lifers whoever wants to come can come to this event and the goal of the event is to essentially connect like-minded people that live on the road full-time or part-time or are just thinking about living on the road and you know, bounce ideas off each other, give each other tips and tricks for the best places to stay, how to get solar, how to protect yourself. The topics are endless. The event is hosted every year by Bob Wells, who is from CheapRVLiving.com. He also has a YouTube channel called Cheap RV Living, and he is the one that organizes this event. This past January marks my second RTR trip, and... I just wanted to talk about my experiences that I've had there personally and relay that message to you basically so that you can decide whether or not you think it's worth it. This is just what goes on there in my experience. So last year in 2018 when I went I noticed that I was one of the only people my age aka in their 20s at this event which was fine. I know that a lot of people that live on the road are generally older than me, maybe in, even in their retirement, and they have worked their whole life and they wanted to see America, so they did what a lot of people do. They bought an RV and they're off seeing the world now. So I knew going into it that I probably wasn't going to see a lot of people my age, but it was fine because I still ended up making some amazing friends the first year. And it just, the atmosphere in general was just really amazing to me. It was a very communal uh, group that I was involved in. And we had like campfires every night and we would tell stories and laugh and make food for the bunch. During the day, you know, we would help each other with our solar or our builds or whatever we were doing. And it was just, it was just a really cool feeling. So even though there weren't a lot of people my age, I did make some friends there that I got along with really well. I went to a couple of the talks that Bob Wells hosted or had guest speakers for last year in 2018. I did go to a couple of those talks. However, last year he was pretty adamant about not filming any of the talks. That was something that only he was allowed to film and no other YouTuber or just even for personal use, people were allowed to film whatsoever. This year, people were allowed to film, and I believe that's because I think a couple people got mad. Like, from what I heard through the grapevine, people kind of started calling him out on being, like, hypocritical. Like, he wanted to share all this information with everybody to help them live a life that they want to on the road, but only he was allowed to broadcast it on YouTube or wherever he wanted to put it. So I think people got a little upset with him for doing that last year. So this year, I believe he did allow people to film so that they could spread the message on their own platforms if they wanted to. The RTR also happens every year right before this other big event in Quartzsite, Arizona called the Big Tent. And the Big Tent is where you can go to shop for solar or just tons of different things for living on the road. It's got a lot of stuff and it also has jobs. You can get jobs there. So two nights before the big tent happened, we were sitting around by a fire around my campsite and this man rolled in and he had had a really terrible time getting to the RTR. Bob, shout out to you if you're watching this. So he ended up coming over and parking next to us and hanging out with us, but he ended up going to the big tent with the intention of getting a job. And he got there really early in the morning. And that day when he came back to the campsite, 
he told us all that he had gotten a job and it was like better than he could ask for and his job was to be a camp host somewhere in Washington and yeah they were gonna pay him a little bit of money every month he's gonna be the camp host so he gets the camp there for free and it's just a really cool opportunity for him so if you are looking to live on the road and have an outdoor lifestyle but you also want to work the big tent does offer jobs as well and Bob Wells said that you're basically guaranteed to get a job if you show up to the big tent because there's a high demand for workers and you're basically just guaranteed to be able to work somewhere if you want and if you show up so that's another aspect of the RTR that might be beneficial to you if that's something that you're interested in that is something that you can go for there and a lot of people have benefited from it another thing that people worry about at the RTR because it is such a large amount of people coming to a very small town at the same time is basically like a pop-up town overnight in the desert all the camping on BLM land is dry camping meaning there's no electricity no water hookups and no sewer however they do have porta potties there and for I didn't use the porta potties because I have a bathroom in my camper trailer however from what I was told they were actually immaculate porta potties they were cleaned once a day and people were saying that they were some of the cleanest porta potties that they've ever been in so if that is a concern for you Yes, there are bathrooms and apparently they are very clean. There is also a massive dumpster there that people can put all their trash in and that was emptied I think once a day um, with the exception of one day I believe there the guy didn't come. I'm not sure why. I, th I think it might have been because of the weather. There was actually really bad weather there one day where people were sinking. I made a video about that. I'll put it in the cards. So relatively speaking, it is a generally clean environment. The rules are really enforced when it comes to not going to the bathroom in the washes or outside or not in a designated bathroom area. They are kind of strict on that, which is actually a good thing for sanitation purposes because when you have thousands of people camping out in a condensed area, you don't really want them defecating on the ground outside where you sleep. I know that there was a video going around about the RTR that had some controversy about the WRTR which is the women's RTR and whether or not there is a need to have a women's RTR. Personally I don't think it's a big deal. It is a completely separate event from the RTR so it's not going to interfere with men's experience at the RTR. From what I gathered it was a completely separate event 25 miles away from the location of the RTR and I believe it happened before the RTR this year so it wasn't excluding anyone for the actual main event of the RTR. The purpose of the women's RTR was for women that are maybe intimidated by traveling alone or just facing certain issues that pertain to women like um, like personal hygiene issues that you might encounter on the road how to deal with I, I don't women's issues I guess I think it could be beneficial for a lot of women to meet like-minded women and share their experiences while living on the road. I personally don't think that that's a big deal, although I know there was some controversy about that this year, whether or not that's even necessary. There are just some issues that women face on the road that men don't experience, vice versa, I'm sure. Men can talk about their problems, women can talk about their problems. I don't think that this should be like a sex or gender issue. It's just an event for people to share stories and experiences with like-minded people. Switching topics though, one thing that you should know about the RTR is that Bob Wells is very adamant about not selling anything or buying anything on BLM land. Therefore you are not allowed to sell 
services. So if you have a product that you make, you are not allowed to sell it at the RTR. I know there was also some controversy there with Bob Wells because apparently he got upset with someone for selling stickers and then went ahead and sold his book. People were saying that was very hypocritical. I personally was not there and did not witness those two events happening, so I'm not really going to speak on that. I just know that it's pretty reinforced that you are not allowed to buy or sell goods or services at the RTR. However, you are allowed to trade, barter, and help people as you please. So if you know a whole lot about setting up a solar system and you have a camping neighbor that needs help with their solar system, you are allowed to help them with that in exchange for dinner or whatever. You get the point. I'm gonna put my hair up for like two seconds because it's really bothering me. I'm sorry. Okay. Continuing on. Another thing that you should know about the RTR is that quite a few YouTubers do show up there, including myself. Personally, I don't film a lot at the RTR just because I'm really trying to be involved with the people that I am meeting there. I've met a lot of subscribers there as well, so I I really don't film a lot while I'm at the RTR, but I do try to get enough like content of like just myself or things that I'm doing to at least make one video for the RTR. It is like a 10-day event. I could theoretically do a different video every day, but I just really want to be involved in that that event, so I don't film as much as some other people do. But that being said, know that there are other YouTubers there that could be filming while they're walking around, so you could potentially show up in the background of one of their videos or while they're filming a talk or whatever. You could be in the audience. I'm just saying if you are uncomfortable with being on camera or chose this lifestyle to maybe get away from someone knowing where you are or whatever it may be, there's the potential that you could show up on camera because of the people that are filming there, including myself. I'm not, I'm not saying that I am a saint and haven't accidentally gotten people in the background of my videos. I have. Just be aware that that is a thing. Some people were wondering about the weather in Quartzsite in January. I'd say the days are usually like mid 60s and the nights are usually like low 40s, upper 30s. So it's not terrible. It's totally doable. You will survive it. Uh, yeah, that's, that's basically the weather there in the desert in January. Although it is generally pretty dry. So make sure you bring like lotion and water, drink a lot of water anyway. It is a desert. The last thing I'm going to mention as a topic is driving in the desert. Finding the RTR is always really easy. However, to get there, you do have to drive down a relatively long dirt road. The entire camping area is not paved either, so you are going to have to drive over and inside of washes. Some of them can get pretty big and kind of steep, but it's nothing that I didn't see anyone handle. Like, even big rigs were in there without much of a problem. But the road is bumpy. The paved road going into the area where the RTR is held is actually way rougher than just driving on the side of the road, which you are allowed to do. It's, for some reason, the dirt is actually smoother than this paved road. So now let me just talk about my personal experience there and a little bit less of like the facts of what the event is and what it looks like. When you're going in to find a camping spot, it's pretty much free game. People just park really sporadically. It's not super organized. So obviously just try to be considerate of how close you're parking to other people. Some people don't mind you very close. Some people do want a little bit more space. But if you are one of those people that want a little bit more space, you can always go to the outskirts. I usually park in Step Van Row because I'm friends with all those dudes and they don't mind me being there. And I always have a really good time by them, and we're generally right by the main camp, so we can see a lot of people going in and out. At the RTR, there is also a day where 
it's like open house day so you can tie a green ribbon on your rig and that means that people are free to come in and tour your rig it is a really interesting place to see different types of builds and what people travel in and what they've done to their places how they're living on the road and you can get a lot of inspiration for yourself if you're building something out or if you want to switch travel vehicles or whatever there is a lot of inspiration there because there is an open house day and a lot of people are very open to having you inside of their house you do not have to participate in that though if you are there just simply don't tie a green ribbon on your rig and no one will come inside people are pretty respectful about it it's cool this particular year i didn't really go to many of the talks and uh, speeches that people were having at the main camp area um, I don't know why, I just wasn't super interested in the topics personally. A lot of people did go. I wanted to go just to hang out with people and meet people and exchange ideas and stories and develop like connections that way. So I wasn't really interested in watching someone on stage. But I had a really good time regardless, met some new people. There were more people my age this year, so I'm anticipating that next year there will be even more people my age to hang out with so I did meet quite a few people around my age that I was able to hang out with this year which was awesome this year separate from the RTR just down the dirt road was the Partyr and the Partyr was a place that basically they didn't have a quiet time so in the main camp RTR area I believe quiet time is 10 p.m. that means don't use your generators after then don't make loud noises da 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 be respectful of people around you at the Partyr however people could basically do whatever they wanted so if you wanted to drink or anything else and then listen to really loud music at a camp area with other people that were doing that and see a bunch of crazy flashing lights and stuff that's available to you as well it's just not in the main camp it's just like i think maybe a mile down the road maybe not even that i'm not sure but it's basically in the same area you can walk to it a lot of people did walk to it i drove to it one night to check it out it's not far so just know that that is a thing as well, if you are not interested in partying and if you're really not interested in all the speeches as well, you can do what I did, which was there is a small mountain range right by the flatland that everyone camps in for BLM. It's really easy to get to um, from the BLM camp. You just go down another dirt road about a mile and a half and then all of a sudden it'll start taking you up off-road dirt roads up into this little mountain range I had a really good time doing that like I said I made a video about the RTR and posted a video which I will again put in the cards so that you can see my first time trying to learn how to off-road while learning how to drive stick so you can go hike around up there there are tons of geocaches up there if you want to go check those out it's basically a mountain range that has a bunch of old mines in it so it's really cool to see and there are tons tons of trails for taking your off-road vehicles and climbing walls basically a lot of people after the rtr is over by then have found a group of people that they have made friends with and stay in touch with meet up with on the road elsewhere and even caravan out of there they a lot of people actually end up going to slab city right after the rtr i'm still a little intimidated by that so i didn't go this year or last year however i may still go this year i'm not sure People are generally there for a little while after the RTR, so I think I've got time. But overall, the experience has been good for me when it comes to making friends and just having people to share stories with. I'm really excited because the people that I met this year um, all live in different parts of the country, and it's just cool to know people from different parts of the country so that when you're in that part of the country, you can go meet up with people. It's, it's just a good time because most of the year I spend on the road I'm alone with my travel buddy but whoever that may be at the time but we don't really meet a lot of people on the road and we don't really hang out with a lot of people on the road either so it's nice once a year to have this event where you can meet a ton of people that are doing exactly what you're doing and 
yeah, you just make some really cool friendships. So it's it's been a good experience for me overall. I think that if it's your first year on the road or if you've never been to an RTR before, I do think personally that it's worth going to at least one. See what the experience is about. I mean, it is a free experience, a free 10-day camping thing. So why not? If you can fit it into your schedule, why not? The only thing that I would really suggest is to make sure that you come into town with as much food as you can hold because it is a 10 day event and there is a market in town but that market is so expensive like I went there to try to get some bread to make sandwiches and one loaf of bread was five dollars I believe the nearest Walmart is like 40 minutes away north in a town called Parker so just bring as much food in as you can because the market that there is is just like it it's it's a ripoff it's seriously a ripoff Sorry, Courtside, but your prices are ridiculous. Other than that, there's not a whole lot to do in Courtside, so just be aware of that. It is a very, very, very small town, mostly populated with RV parks. It's it's a pass through town right off the 10. So, that's that. Anyway, I hope you guys have a better idea of what to expect at the RTR. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It does mean a lot to me. Subscribe to my channel if you are interested in more road life videos. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day.